Hello there, this is Tamil, and I will go over Clip Studio Paint workspace tips. Really good stuff, you are going to learn something new, I promise. In short, this is the way Clip Studio Paint comes in uh, by default. There are a lot of tabs, and some of them are not as useful for some people. That is why the first thing you do is to you undock them it's just to drag out and just close it now we're getting to an interesting part item bank great sub tool what does it do it saves images from your computer that you can quickly access immediately why would you need that in short let's say i have a logo and i do have a logo i go into item bank click here register and look for my logo and there it is i click logo and it can drop it in here now i have the logo and i can click here and do settings maybe logo preview white background and now i have that and i click and drag it and that's it sub view really great sub view in short lets you have references in a separate window if you don't have anything like right now this is what it's supposed to look like in here, at the very bottom, you just click Import. After you import, you can select multiple images, and there you have it. You have the sub-view that you can zoom in and zoom out, and you can flip it, and you can drop an image that you like, let's say a skull, and then on this canvas, I will draw the skull, and I will study it and make a study out of it. Super cool. If you have an old painting that you used, you can just go in here and go switch to eyedropper and you can select the colors from that painting on your new painting so you don't have to keep importing it as if it's a new thing. And you can cycle through them with this button to the previous and that's it. Isn't this amazing? All right, let's delete it and close it. Another useful one is Navigator. If you know what the navigator is, it shows a preview of your image, but very, very small. So a lot of um, young artists, they do a painting they like, and then they make very, very small details. They zoom in and they try to add like maybe feather or some other detail. But if you want to make a good painting, you want to make sure it looks great on any size. That's why you have the navigator so that you can see that it looks a little bit noisy or the details are too small, maybe the colors are off, whatever it might be. Another one is uh, rotation. So if you want, you do the R shortcut and you rotate it. And right here, there's the reset rotation. And there's also at the very bottom, but it's a little bit smaller. And you can just flip the canvas like vertically super great tool to keep if you accidentally closed something and you want to bring it back you go to window and there is the list of all the tools that you need so let's say I closed a color set or maybe history and in you click it and the history will pop up let's say I click it I close it windows history boom it's right here now if you dock the uh, tools like here you can expand them by the uh, by clicking on the little arrow or you can completely hide them by clicking the double arrow super cool and amazing and these are the two tools that are going to change your workflow if you haven't used them before auto action is basically a set of actions that can be repeatedly made if you have something that you want to keep doing every single time you know, you don't want to do it every single time because you're lazy and your workflow requires it, but you still do it because you have to manually go through it. Blah, 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 blah. Let me show you in practice. It makes <laughs> way more sense in practice. Let's say I go into here and these are the actions that are usually coming with it. They're pre-made. So one of them is expand by selection by one pixel and fill. So if I do a selection and then double click on this, Boom, it fills it in for me with black. But let's say you want something more complex, right? Uh, you don't know what it might be. If you want, you can create your own 
action set. Let's click here and, uh, you know, maybe you want to name it, but this is just the uh, categories. And if you want to make a new action, click here and let's call it clip mask. In the clip mask, so far it is empty and you click the record button. Now I will make a new layer and then I will do clip mask and now I will stop recording. Now I have clip mask recorded in my action. So if I double click, I will keep getting more layers that are clipping automatically for me. Super important. You can change action into button mode. So now I don't even have to double click it. I can just one click and boom, I'm saving myself like three button clicks in just a few seconds. It's great. It's, it's great. It's great. It's crazy and great at the same time. Now, this is cool and all, but at the same time, there's even a cooler thing called quick access. And quick access allows you to save actions that you like for one click of a button. So I created it an auto action. So in order to edit this, you can go into quick access settings and let's go, for example, into auto action and I go into default and there's a clip mask and I add it and I close it. Now I can just click this and it will keep doing that action. Pretty great. Now you can have a brush that you like. Or maybe you want to do a color that you like, all right? And you add it. Now that one color is saved right here. And let me see, and make a new layer, boom. I can switch it, switch it to black, switch it to red, boom. Pretty amazing. You can save yourself colors, you can save yourself certain brushes. And then even the default one is not that bad. You can do delete, you can do cut. And let's say a common action would be if you have a lot of layers, right? And you, you know, you grouped it, you merged it. And then you say, well, I like this, but I want to select it, cut and paste. Well, you go and select and then you cut it and then you paste it and then the separate layer. And now you have it separate, right? Cool. But in theory, what you can do is to uh, set up an action for it. And here, you select it, you record it, and say cut, paste, deselect. And in here, you can add that action into this folder. And then with just one button, you will be able to cut and paste, deselect, and transform right after that. The possibilities are endless. Another quick tip for you, if you didn't know, you can customize your brush groups. So in short, let's say you have this brush and I duplicate it and in here I can change whatever icon I want. Let's say I want an airbrush and I actually can use a color be behind it. So I can highlight that one and be like, okay, that's one for sure. You can also load a custom image into it, but let's just say I want the default. Now, this one will have a weird icon that I just made. I drag it, I drag it right here, boom. I have my own custom brush group that has that one icon that I made. And this is really useful because you can now group these, you can have separate icons, you can change the naming. Uh, let's say I want my brushes. That's super useful for people who don't do that already highly recommend checking it out another cool feature that clip studio paint has let's say i draw with black right and i want to use an eraser and usually you click e for eraser and you click the whatever eraser you want and then you erase it but sometimes you want to use the brush that you're using right now for deletion and right here on the left panel shows you the transparency color if you click it it will allow you to draw transparency which means delete it with the brush that you're using right now a little bit annoying that you have to click on it so that's why there's a shortcut if you click x it will switch between the front and back color so right now is white right now is black 
But if you click C, now you can delete it. Isn't this freaking amazing? You can paint the entire painting with one brush without deselecting anything, honestly. Super useful. Another quick thing that I always do is square color wheel makes no sense to me because it has one black point, I mean two black points, one white point and one color point. I prefer the triangular because it has one white, one black and one color. So now I can switch in between the all three at the same time. In order to do that, you just click the little icon on the color wheel, switch to color wheel to HSL space. Before I forget, if you want to reset it, you go into Windows Workspace Reset to default. If you want to save your preferences, you go into Register Workspace and it will keep your palette, shortcut settings, command palette, and preference and units layout. Another cool, amazing thing you have to try. If you go into File, Shortcut Settings, Pop-Up Palette. What does Pop-Up Palette do? In short, you can select whatever is in here or add more and you can select the letter for a shortcut that will only pop up for one second or two. So I clicked color wheel, I double clicked in it, I clicked U and I over overwrite the shortcut and I click OK. Now I can hit U as I'm painting. Now the color wheel will pop up and will select the color, deselect it, boom. I can just keep doing U and keep switching the color that I need without even going back over here and keep messing with the color. And I can save myself space too because I can just drag it outside, close it, and I don't even need it because I have the shortcut. Isn't this freaking cool? This is amazing. There is a preference tab. If you go into file, preference, or command K, you can see all of these things are pretty important. I highly recommend reading all of them, but these are the main ones that I encourage you to check it out. Interface, you can switch from light to dark. If you want to burn your eyes, if you want to burn your eyes a little bit less, you can just adjust the density. Or if you don't want to do black, you can do lighter or darker. Uh, works either way. Another one is touch operations. If your interface is a little bit too small, you can adjust this, make it larger, make it smaller. To save some screen space, I would just click small. If uh, you didn't notice, it will actually reset any time you close it. And so I have to click it, click OK, restart Clip Studio Paint, and then it will change. So let me do that and I'll show you the difference. So I switched to large just to show you the difference. And this is how it looks now. It looks pretty crazy, but if you have a huge screen and the icons are very, very tiny, then this is the thing that you want to do. If you want to Go back and change it again. You can just do it to preferences and you know just switch to small or default. Here is the performance. If you don't know anything about computers, in short, this is RAM. RAM is good, and the more RAM you have, the better. If you have a lot of applications open, it will use a lot of RAM. Uh, Clip Studio Paint uses 70% of it by default. If you have a lot of it, I have 32 gigabytes, and that's very uh, large amount. You can just bump it up to 100. In theory, it will work a little bit better if you have heavy files. This is virtual memory path. If you have multiple drives, I don't, but if you do, just pick the one that has more space in it. This will help you to work with uh, Clip Studio Paint a little bit faster. It will boost the performance. If you have an SSD or a hard drive, I recommend you using the SSD for this because SSDs are a little bit faster. This undo is actually very important. Undo levels is set to 200 by default, I believe, and that's a lot. That's basically determining how much history you have, and I recommend you dropping it down to a hundred, and that will help you to run Clip Studio Paint a little bit faster again. If you have very, very slow computer, just drop it down to maybe 50 or 20, and it will help you also work with the, with the Clip Studio Paint. Now, file recovery, really, really useful. You should check it out. If you have a file and something goes wrong, it crashes, it usually has a backup. If you want, you can have the backup enabled, which is enable canvas recovery. And if you have a slow computer, I would suggest you turn it off or 
make the minutes longer because this says every uh, X amount of minutes it will start saving it and having a backup of it. And if you have a very powerful computer, you can go ahead and like set it to maybe one minute and then every minute it will save your file. I think one minute is overkill, you can set it to five and I think it will be fine. There's a lot of other different stuff, but I don't think they're as important for everybody as uh, you would think. So up to you to read all of it. I will go ahead and show you some trick for the layer panel. In short, I have very little details in the layer panel and I don't really like that and sometimes I like to have it bigger so I can see what's actually in the layer. And in order to do that, you just click here and you go thumbnail size and you can go the largest one and now all of the layers will be bigger which actually would help you see what is in the layer that is drawn and you can see that this one is the scribble one and this one is the small one and you know it's just a little trick that I would use if you have a bigger screen and the downside is obviously you have to scroll more but I think it's worth it I usually use the uh, next to large the large one which is better than the default in my opinion that is it for today. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions at all. I hope you learned something today. If you have any other tips, drop them in the comment section and happy painting.